Hello, welcome to today's lesson. Today's lesson is about graphing linear equalities. On today's video, I'm gonna go over six examples of how to graph linear inequalities. Graphing linear inequalities. How to graph linear inequalities. I'm so glad you asked. Step one, isolate Y. Step two, plot the Y intercept. Step three, use the slope to rise and run. Step four, choose a solid line or a dotted line. It's dotted if it's less than or greater than. It's solid if it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Five, shade under or over. You shade under if it's less than or less than or equal to. You shade over if it's greater than or greater than or equal to. Under, less than, less than or equal to. Over, greater than, greater than or equal to. Example number two, x minus y is greater than two. I need to get y by itself. Minus x on both sides. Negative y is greater than negative x plus two. Divide everything by what's in front of y. A lot of times my students forget this. There is a negative in front of the y. I can't forget about it and it's a negative one. So I'm gonna divide everything by negative one. When you divide by a negative and you are doing inequalities, what do you need to do? Flip that symbol, baby. Okay, so what's going to happen now is in y equals mx plus b, I can see clearly, I can see clearly now. Um, and I know that my y-intercept is going to go ahead and be the negative 2. And my slope is going to be 1 over 1, or just 1. Okay, but I like it in a fraction so I can see what my rise over run is. First things first, I'm going to plot my y-intercept at a negative 2. Boop, boop. And then I'm going to rise up using my slope. Rise up 1. And then I'm going to run over 1. Hey, now. My, my symbol is a less than, so it's a dotted line and I shade under. So dotted, shade under. Um, example number three of six. So y is greater than seven over fourths x plus two. Oh my gosh, a fraction, but wait. We like our slopes to be fractions, so no need to fear, okay? And the other great thing about this problem is actually y is already isolated. That's usually my first step, but they already did that. So this problem is way easier than it should be. So I already know that my y-intercept is going to be 2. I already know that my slope is 7 over 4 so what am I going to do first? I'm going to put my y-intercept on the graph at the positive 2. Boom. Hey. And then I'm going to rise over run. My rise is going to end up being my 7. So I'm going to go up 7 spaces. And then my run is going to be 4. So I'm going to run right 4 spaces. Boom. Look at this symbol is a greater than. So it tells me that it's a dotted line and I shade above the line or over the line. So dotted line, shade above. Boom, look at us, halfway done, okay? Example numero cuatro, okay? Um, I need to do what? Isolate Y. This problem isn't so easy this time because I have stuff that I need to get rid of. So minus 3x, minus 3x, 2y is less than or equal to negative 3x plus 10. Again, not combining the 3x and the 10. Don't do that. Just put them next to each other. They're not like terms. Can't combine them. So I'm going to divide by 2 because I need to get y by itself. And until, the, until I get rid of that 2, y is not by itself. Okay? Did I change the symbol this time? 
No, I didn't. Why? Because that orange two is positive. If they were negative, those orange twos, then I would flip my symbol. But because they're positive, I leave it alone. It doesn't matter if that purple three is negative. Just if those twos on the bottom are negative, then I flip my symbol. Okay? So I'm going to decide what's my y-intercept. Boom, a five. And then what's my slope? Boom, negative three halves. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plot my y-intercept on the graph first. Hey at the five, so you go up five. And then I'm gonna use my slope as my rise. Hey, my rise is negative three. And then that makes me go down three spaces. I'm gonna run over two spaces. Let's look at our symbol. Am I a solid or a dotted? Solid. Am I under or am I over? Under. Hey. Boom. Look at us. Now the next two examples are really easy. You did four out of six examples already. Let's go for number five and number six. Number five and six are special types of lines. They are... What, what I call my hoy and my vux lines, okay? So when it's just y and a number or x and a number, I treat those problems differently. So when it's just y is a number, I use my acronym hoy. My algebra teacher taught me this when I was in high school more than 10 years ago. Whew. And um, I still use it to this day. Horizontal, H. The O is not really a O. It stands for zero slope. And the equation looks like Y equals a number. Anytime I see Y and just a number, I should know that's a horizontal line. It has zero slope because the equation is just Y and a number. So my job is easy. I'm going to go to the four on the Y axis. And then I'm going to put another line, um, another dot somewhere horizontally. doesn't even matter where, left or right, just as long as it's horizontal. Not slanted. And I need to check, am I solid or dotted, under or over? Ta-da! Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, okay. so last example. Oh, you hear my, my voice crack. <laughs> X is less than negative five. This is a VUX line. VUX stands for vertical undefined slope x equals a number so anytime i see just x and a number i automatically know okay hey it's a vertical line so i'm going up and down unlike horizontal lines that go left to right like the horizon horizontal horizon vertical goes up and down so it's negative five so on the x axis i'm going to find negative five and I'm going to just put another dot vertical. So I just moved up. Who cares? Right? I could have went down. It's fine. As long as it's still vertical. I'm going to look at my symbol. My symbol tells me that that is a dotted line. And I'm going to shade less or left. Because there's not an above or below here. Right? I just have a left and a right. And numbers that are less than negative 5 are to the left of negative 5. Voila. That's it. That's that lesson in a nutshell. You want to know what I'm going to tell you to do? I'm going to tell you to take a separate sheet of paper out. With that separate sheet of paper, what you are going to do is you are going to take that paper and you're going to do the examples that we just did over again without looking. See if you can get them right. That's how you know you actually learned the material. Okay, and after that, I will just see you in the next one. Later.